And then you want to share okay. your screen, Marius? <clears throat> yes, I will do that. Uh, just give me one second. Share screen. Okay. So, hi, everyone. To the first HubDev call of 2024. So, Jehan cannot make it today. So, you are stuck with me. Um, so, a uh, reminder again, if anybody has topics that they want to add, just add them to the agenda that they want to discuss. But let's start first with uh, some uh, updates from uh, the informal hub team. So here is a little bit misleading with the two past weeks since we had the break. So it's a little bit since the last time we talked, right? So since December 13, what, uh, what I, have we been doing? So first of all, Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, in case you missed, there are two blog posts that we published at the end of uh, last year. One is uh, end of the year recap. So it's more a high level recap of what have what have we been doing throughout the year. And this also, we missed a few monthly updates due to the Christmas break, Cosmoverse, a bunch of things that happen. And we just decided instead of just publishing three updates, actually we missed exactly the entire Q4. So we just decided to publish the entire Q4 in one post. Um, so please have a look there and yeah, if you have any feedback, we are welcoming that. Uh, so yeah, what are we do we were doing in the last period of time? Working on Gaia v15. So this is a lot of work we are putting into this. It's almost done, but still not there yet. Um, but pretty close. Um, we are currently reviewing the LSM porting to SDK 047. It was actually so. We thanks to Sam from Stride, to Zaki, to the SDK team also. So a lot of effort was put into this. I think the review is pretty much done. We just need to kind of wrap up everything, integrate them together into, into Gaia. We have a branch specifically that we already ported to SDK 47. So on top of that, we need to work on migration on some migration code. One is for the minimum commission for validators. The code is already ready, just that first we need to bring the SDK changes. Um, but yeah, the code is ready, is reviewed, all good. And then there is also, we need to, this is something that it's on our to-do list to write the migration code for uh, getting back the, moving to the community pool, the funds from proposal 104. This is basically the funding for Notional. Of course, this uh, all of these points here are just the requirements until we get the release candidate for V15. Once we get that, of course, we follow the same procedure, pass it to HIFA, testing it, adding it to the updated and testnet. We we'll like this time for V15 to have it in the testnet for like two weeks, instead of usually we have it for one week before we put a government proposal. Um, since there, there are a lot of changes in this upgrade, so we were thinking to just leave it on the testnet, people to play with it for two weeks, afterwards to put a proposal, online and uh, and that's it yeah and then upgrade we upgrade finally to SDK 47. Um yeah uh, next uh, we we recently I think yesterday we cut uh, we cut the final release for uh, interchange security v330. This uh, is the first of all is just relevant for uh, for providers right so actually this will be the version of interchange security that will go on Gaia v15. So major things that contain is the cryptographic application, which is already on the hub, but now it ha had to be ported to 47. Uh, and I think that's the most, the biggest thing. Anyway, everybody can go on. Uh, so there are the, what else was there? There were two other things, but. Ah, yeah, there is something that is please the consumer, Genesis state. So all the highlights can be find, found in the release notes. Um, so we changed something in the consumer genesis state, which requires now for new consumer chains that are launching with previous versions, they need to transform their genesis state. Um, 
this is all documented in the, in the ICS documentation. Also, this release adds a new query for on the provider to get access to all the assigned consumer uh, consumer keys more easily. Um, yeah, so that was uh, that was out. That this is out. Um, also, given that Neutron is now on uh, ICS v310, if I'm not mistaken, and Stride is also on 310 for a while. So we don't have any consumer chains on v1 anymore. Before Neutron was on a special branch of v1 that was this since we had an emergency release in spring last year um, or summer last year, whatever. Um, so basically we killed the V1 line. We didn't make sense to keep supporting it. Nobody's using it. Uh, the V1 was anyway on 45. Uh, we keep supporting V200. V200 is the only version of interchain security that is on 45 uh, that consumers can run. So at the moment, nobody's using it, but we just want to leave it for a while in case there is a chain that wants to launch on 45, on SDK 45, and they want to become a consumer chain. Uh, we recommend though to use V3, right? So we recommend all the chains to upgrade 47. 45 is already end of life. That's the reason we are already moving work a lot to move the Gaia to, to move the hub to from it. Um, so yeah, uh, we also, since we upgraded the hub on for, on V240, we also marked this, this fork basically of interchain security that is specific for the hub, we mark it as an end of life. So in general, if you go to the release, we have the entire uh, stable release policy, right? So. This is what will be theoretically the end of life for V2. So mid year, this uh, mid, yeah, uh, June this year. However, we may change that based on this uh, on this pro, since we have a relatively low number of consumer chains. It's actually two plus whatever may join soon. Uh, if not, nobody's using a major release series, we just mark it as end of life. Cool. Um, we MPT, so model based testing with Quint, is running now in the Interchain Security CI. We plan to post a blog, so we will have a blog post, I think, by the end of the week, to it will be published with uh, where we talk more about this. But this is something pretty cool. We worked, uh, we worked for a while on this. Well, I mentioned before that we were having prototypes and stuff. This now is actually running. Of course, the Queen model is not complete. Complete. It's not covering the entire protocol, but it's covering a bunch of it. And we want to continue expanding it. Right, adding key assignment, uh, reward distribution, and other parts, other parts of the protocol to be modeled by, by Quint. Um, Another thing is we fixed the bug that we found uh, uh, in uh, this in uh, soft opt out. So the idea was that so thanks first of all for to I think his name is Sergey. I think so. Yeah, Sergey. Thanks Sergey for finding uh, for notifying us about this unexpected behavior. The the behavior was that at the edge between soft opt out and not. Uh, when validators are moving from one to the other, uh, from so in the bottom, let's say five percent or top ninety-five percent, once they move in the top ninety-five percent, they will be immediately marked as down. Why? Because the downtime logic was is running non-stop, right? Even if you are in the bottom nine, uh, bottom five percent, it's just that the logic in interchain security doesn't allow for this package to be sent. Uh, so we fix that to actually once you join to have a warm up window, right? So now you join for a certain period of time, you don't have to sign blocks or you should, but you have a window to to have time to join the consumer chain. Um, so this will be included in ICS v4, which we want to release soon, and we highly recommend all consumer chains to upgrade to it. Uh, so more details can you can find in uh, in the issue 
at this link. Um, as I was saying that we plan to, we are working on cutting ICSv4. Uh, besides, yeah, this bug fix and also bringing the entire throttling v2, so throttling with retries, uh, enabling the entire feature, we also plan to bump Golang to 121. Um, we don't see any reason to not do that. It will happen anyway in uh, for uh, ICSv5 as a requirement of SDK. SDK 50 is on uh, is on 121. So we decided to do this from now. It's uh, seems simpler. Another thing is we created a draft for an ICS epox ADR. So at the moment, as you may know, every time there is a validator update, so ev in every block that the validator set on the hub is changing, you have to send a VSC packet, right? So you have to send this to all the consumers, all these updates. Um, and since a change in the voting power mean, is caused by any delegation or undelegation on any of these events, this kind of happens every block. That means that every block, the hub has to send these VSC packets to Stride and Neutron. This is very expensive for, and also Stride and Neutron needs to send back the VSC mature packets. This is very expensive from a relaying point of view, right? Of course, you can batch this together and send them very, every one hour, but still it's, it's a hassle. So the simpler thing is to just uh, send them every one hour, every, every day. You anyway have relaying delays. And since the unbonding period is three weeks, okay, for, for stride is one, two weeks, but a delay of one hour really doesn't matter, right? So we could send, instead of sending one every six, six seconds, six, seven seconds, we send the one every one hour. So the implementation should be quite easy, but yeah, we started with the ADR. It's still in review. Uh, once it's approved, we'll start implementing it. Uh, one last thing, uh, it happened actually yesterday, we had the meeting with the oversight committee uh, regarding the Q1 plan. So the meeting went well, I think. Uh, it was very, very productive, a lot of feedback. We want to thank, first of all, the members of the oversight committee for taking their time. Uh, it was a long meeting, like two hours. Uh, and we plan to publish the results of the meeting. So the, the plan together with the Q&A, and all of these things so very soon, right? So in the next days, we'll make this public. I I think this is all. Any questions? So do we have any rough timeline for Gaia V15 release candidate? For the V15? Yep. So my hope is that we'll manage to get it by the end of the week. Okay. But you know how these things go because yeah. pretty much everything is done, but there are these tiny things that need to be uh, integrated properly, right? Versions, make sure that you don't miss anything. Uh, but yeah, my hope is that by the end of the week, but I'm quite confident that if that doesn't happen by the end of next week, we should have a release candidate. Okay. Thank you. Sure. If there are no other questions, I'll pass it to, to Dante. Uh, yeah, thanks, Marius. Uh, let's see. The first item here we have in the work over the past couple of weeks, um, we have uh, the Ether consumer chain launching in the testnet next week. Um, they just sent us all their information on the binaries this week for us to begin some uh, preliminary testing. So rehearsal is going to take place next Wednesday in the uh, replicated security testnet. We don't uh, we don't plan on it being a persistent testnet. I think it's going to be around for maybe a week. Make sure the, it works the way uh, the Ether team expects it to, and then we'll remove it. So that's Ether. Um, we just had a two uh, emergency upgrades on Neutron. I mean, one in mainnet, one in testnet uh, today. Uh, deal with some uh, Cosm Wasm uh, patches. It looks like everything went well on both testnet and mainnet. Um, and they are also uh, planning another 
a major upgrade for next Wednesday. So it looks like uh, next Wednesday, Testnet is going to have two major events, one launch and one upgrade. Um, we've also been uh, testing uh, the V3.3.0 of ICS, mainly uh, making sure it's still backwards compatible with some uh, specified ICS versions. And we're also testing against uh, Gaia V14 and V15, and just that's due to uh, it being listed in our upgrade workflows for the B15 upgrade. Um, we've also been uh, preparing our, our testing uh, workflows, both the uh, the fresh state and the stateful uh, genesis workflows, so that uh, we don't get a lot of surprises when we do the switch over to B15. Uh, we, we, we're aware that there are some changes in the SDK. It might be some uh, items that we need to change in our, in, our, in our tooling, but we're getting ready for those. And part of them includes adding uh, PFM testing that we didn't have before. Um, so that's testing in B15. We've also been doing a little bit of uh, testing on the, on the mempool investigation side of things. Uh, we're currently running some uh, scenarios to uh, characterize the increase in memory use and increase in state uh, when we use different uh, transaction sizes. So uh, I think that was like the last bit of data we wanted to collect before we started working on a report that we can share with with, uh, with everyone else in terms of um, yeah what what are our uh, how do we see mempool settings and how they could be changed so that uh, a given chain is a bit more resilient when it comes to large volumes of traffic uh, aside from changing the code base mostly looking at it from a perspective of what configurations work uh, better than others when, when there is a, a lot of stress on, on, a, on a chain. Um, that's that's what we have going on right now. And uh, yeah, it looks like uh, they'll be quite busy in the next couple of weeks, given that the B15 is coming out and uh, a couple of consumer chain uh, events. And yeah, that's all we have for now. Any questions? I have one regarding the PFM testing for Gaia V15. Uh, are you in contact with anybody from the Strangelove team? Not at this point. I think we should get in touch with somebody to... Because I'm sure that they have some uh, some happy paths, right? Some scenarios that would be useful to check. Because, yeah, indeed, it will be... It will be nice to have this part of the testing uh, that we usually do when we upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, and also out of curiosity, I don't know if anybody knows, does anybody use PFM on the hub? Are there projects using it? Not aware of any. Um, they have that, and can for sure reach out to a strange lab about happy paths. Okay, I I would be really curious who is using it, and because yeah, it's yeah. Cool. Any any other questions? Um, I see that. Uh, Thomas, I assume that you added this point. Yeah, that's me. So, yeah. So at all in bits, we have this Ignite CLI uh, tool, and we wanted to add the ability to scaffold the consumer chain. But since we first uh, decided to be compatible with SDK 50, uh, to deliver this with this feature, we need uh, ICS SDK 50 uh, compatibility too. So my question was just. Do you have any time frame for uh, having ICS compatible with SDK 50? Do you need a final release or an alpha release will be good enough? Oh, I think alpha release can be good enough, yes. Actually, I already started to base uh, my dependency to a branch that is called V50 updates, uh, V50 upgrade, I think. Yeah, I think this is the one that. Uh, so you worked with Mattia and with Bernd on this thing. Right? Yeah, I. Yeah, I, I, I no, this is something else. Uh, uh, this is another. But, um, one. I don't know, what is the one? 
Oh, I don't think we have a PR. No, there's no, there's no PR. This is the, the, the PR you just show is the one, one last, uh, very old one. But I didn't think there was. Okay. Uh, it's B50 upgrade. Uh, yeah, the third one, I think. This one? Yes. Yeah, it should be this one. Yes, most likely is this one. So, the thing is at the moment, Matya is on, uh, is off for a few, he will be back next week. Mm -hmm. So, the reason we don't, so this can be used, right? So, this, to my knowledge, it's uh, that branch has all the work done, especially after we brought the SDK fix. You, we discussed that before, right? So you actually, you, you guys helped uh, finding that problem. Uh, so that branch should work. Of course, what we need to do is, at the moment, uh, ICS main contains V4. Uh, once we create the release branch for that and we create an RC, uh, we are free to start merging that to main. So main then will become V5 with SDK 50. Um, of course, for that, we need to first uh, rebase this branch, bring all the new, there are a few things that got changed in since this branch was created. Um, but it, it shouldn't be anything V50 related. So if it's something, for example, that fix needs to be backported here or Actually, this should be rebased on that. Uh, and that will bring it to main. So this, I think, will be one of the first thing Matia will do once he's back. So he's back next week, midweek. I think by the next time. So you can already use the branch, right? Yeah, I, I, I do. List. But uh, by, so in two weeks, when we have this next call, we should be able to have... Um, an alpha, at least if we do not have uh, an actual release candidate. So cool. Okay, nice. Uh, so how about the release? It will be in ICS v4? No. So v4 will contain still 47. Okay. So it will be v5. Uh, the, re okay. the reason we actually created the v4 is due to, it's, it's a boring thing. It's uh, due to the throttling with retry, the, the jail throttling with retry, and to have backwards compatibility between consumers and the provider, we needed to, to separate. So now Gaia will be on V3, and we're highly encouraging all the consumers to get to V4. Once all the consumers are on V4, we can upgrade also Gaia to V4. So we just need the line that we can continuously update the V3 in case we need to update the provider until that happens, right? But hopefully, yeah, we can kill V3 very soon and we move all to V4. Uh, but yeah, both V3 and V4 will be with SDK 47. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Any any other things that somebody wants to discuss? Uh, Dante, maybe a question because you're mentioning. So next week you said that there will be two consumer chain events. What are those? Yeah, uh, one of them is a major upgrade from the Neutron team, and the other one is we're launching the Ether uh, consumer chain. It's uh, on the testnet or the actual chain? Oh, on the, on the testnet. Okay, okay, okay. Do you know what uh, Neutron is up? They are changing the ICS version or something, or no? It's just I am not aware. I, I don't. I don't think it's related to ICS, but I can ask them. Okay. Cool. Um, no, it will be nice. I'm. It will be nice to start pushing the consumer chains to move to to V three to zero or V four directly. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think also this week stride is gonna upgrade. So that will be another uh -huh. uh, event happening. A uh, stride the chain, not the consumer, uh, not the the testnet. Yes. Um, yeah, I saw a message. They were they had some questions about uh, the I think they were a bit uh, 
concerned about the last Neutron upgrade and they just wanted some uh, reassurance around the ICS versions because I think they are upgrading ICS. I was ha asking them to go to 3.2.0. They are on 3.1.0. Right. And uh, yeah, I don't think there is any problem. And actually, the this was also, they wanted to make sure that the upgrade, but Neutron upgraded to 3.1.0. Stripe is already on it. Uh, the Neutron upgrade, the long... Uh, the long migration was not due to ICS. So that was oh, a part of that upgrade. Try uh, to tell you so the response there. Yeah. So that shouldn't be a problem. Good. Of course, they should test. Uh, we highly encourage every team before they upgrade their chains to test it first and to, to not upgrade mainnet to different versions of ICS directly without testing. Yes. Yeah, I, th I think it's it's something we, we have in our in our to do list about uh, starting conversation with Stride again about restarting a chain in, in testnet to do, do exactly this kind of uh, de-risking. Okay. Uh, cool. Any any other topics that we want to discuss? Then I guess we can cut it short. Isabel, something that? Um, nope, not on my end. Um, I think this was a fairly productive call. So excited to be starting the new year with you all. <laughs> Likewise. Same. OK, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care.